Hey everyone and welcome to another biochemistry optical core tutorial video. Today I have a video that's focused on resonance scanning with the box Nikon A1 confocal. So many of you have tried the resonance scanner before. You might have even used it extensively and you picked up on its fast refresh rate, um, but you probably also picked up on the fact that it has relatively poor image quality compared to the Galvano imaging scanner. You might have figured that based on this, it really wasn't worth your time. However, today I want to show you how you can use the resonance scanner, not necessarily to take your final images, but instead to speed up your overall imaging experiment and potentially make it a key part of your imaging pipeline. So let's start by opening the A1 Plus GUI here in Elements. I'm just going to right click anywhere. Uh, I'm going to go to A1 Plus Compact GUI right here. Uh, so here I've it kind of explained some of the imaging parameters of this in previous videos, but uh, I'll just show you that right now it's at Galvano, which is the normal imaging mode that most people are used to, and I have it set for the 561 laser. My sample is already in focus, and let me just hit play. And now you can see my image looks pretty good. Everything's pretty much in focus, and you might have a situation though that you don't want to just take this field of view, but you want to take many different fields of view. As you're going about your sampling, your imaging experiments, you might think there's got to be a faster way of doing this. I shouldn't have to work with the slowness, which I'll show you how slow, of course, this can be, that by just moving my joystick around, it's very slow and it can be very difficult to find new fields of view for you to image. The reason for this is because the Galvano itself is just two mechanical mirrors that are aligned and, and placed in the optical pathway to just scan laser light in either the X direction up here or the Y direction. In general, this is a slower, more sensitive approach. So you'll get really good looking data, but it takes a while to scan the entire field of view that you're looking at. You can, of course, shrink this by going to your scan area by just clicking this button and then uh, lowering your scan area and doing less. But if you just want to find fields of view so that you can tell elements to jump around to those positions and take images for you, the best way to do that, I think, is to select resonant mode. So I'm going to select resonant mode here. I'm going to hit play. So by the way, I'm hitting play and these are the same settings as Galvano, just to kind of show you and compare. You can see it looks kind of grainy but it's kind of pulsing a lot. And that's because the resonant mirrors, confusingly enough, are constructed out of galvanometers, galvanos, but they use a different principle where instead of using these sort of linear mechanisms to move the mirrors at different angles and produce the image, like you see in the, the galvano mode, resonant uses the mirrors like a tuning fork. And so they oscillate between different angles. And by doing that, it actually rapidly speeds up the imaging speed itself. So that's why if I move this a little bit, you can see that things move around very quickly. And this is a very useful mode to be in for the confocal, because as I said, your sample may be quite large and there's a lot of fields of view you want to get through. And so your objective may be to take as many images as possible and that can take a very long time to do. So with the resonant mode, what I like to do is find fields of view I like and mark them. So to do that, I'm going to right click again and go to acquisition controls and ND acquisition. And here you can see under XY, this tab up here, you can select many different positions that you want to go into. So let's just say that the one I'm at right now, I want to make that a position that I take an image of. So if I want to do that, I can just select this and it will save the X, Y, and Z location. Now you usually will have to uh, select this include Z box here. So just make sure that's selected so it will save your Z position as well. Because otherwise it'll just save your X and Y and it'll likely be out of focus whenever you move back to different positions. I'm also going to select this move stage to selected point because what that will do is if I press this button here or click on any of the positions I'll, I'll uh, select, it will move the stage automatically to that position. So let's go back here 
and let's try looking for a few more positions just to note them. So as I said, I'm just doing this, and you may decide, by the way, that you want to know where all the nuclei are. Well, you can do multiple wavelengths here, and it's still, I think, considerably faster than if you were to do the typical way of doing this through the galvano mode. Um, it's up to you. Usually what people have is they have a specific floor floor they're looking at, and it can just take a long time to find the specific areas in your sample that contain that fluorescence. So you can search many different wavelengths here, and ultimately quickly find out where those fluorophores are hiding. So let's say that this is the position I want. I'll find another couple ones. Let's say I like that one. And let's do this one over here. And now if I press this button, the stage will automatically move to where that position was. I'll do the same thing here. And so you can see this is very powerful because I can couple this by selecting this and my wavelengths. I can couple this to um, several of my presets or my optical configurations to basically perform imaging at each one of those positions. So here the way I have it set up is it will acquire three different images at the four different positions that I've acquired. And I did that in less than two minutes. So you can imagine that instead of having to wait, go around with the Galvano, find what you want, it will take a while to do that. So this hopefully is a great way for you to speed up your imaging time um, at the loss of not being able to take images with the resonance itself. And just to real quick go over and show you a little bit of what you miss out on by selecting resonance, you don't get to choose your resolution. It's, it's, uh, you can change the scan area. So you can still do this and, and make it even faster. So if I were to confirm this, press play, I can use this to very quickly look around and it'll scan even faster. Um, so you can modify this if you want, if it's still not fast enough. And this isn't really the only use of your resident scanner. It can actually be used for something like photo activation experiments where you can use it in tandem with an, a galvano use the galvano to ablate a certain region of your sample and then use resonant mode to quickly capture those dynamic events that happen afterward so you can capture maybe the diffusion of your fluorophore or something so using these in tandem is, is also possible um, i won't show that in today's video because i don't have a sample that's able to do that but it is quite possible to do that and that's another very common use of of this technology so i think i'll stop here for this video but please make sure to check out some of my other tutorial videos, like selecting your best imaging settings and using optical configurations. If you have any questions or comments, please send me an email at opticalcore at biochem.wisc.edu. Thanks for watching.